All right, good morning and welcome everyone. And thanks for joining us for another session of 30 Minutes With. This is Downtown Spokane's recurring webinar series in which we bring to you uh, local industry experts and community leaders and significant figures uh, to talk about some, more, some of the more pressing topics of the day and useful information about our downtown here in Spokane. So my name is Kevin Campbell. I'm the Business Relations Coordinator for the Downtown Spokane Partnership and Business Improvement District. And today I have the pleasure of introducing a future presenter and a fellow member here at the Downtown Spokane team, Karen Fritz. Uh, Karen is the director of our clean team and today is going to be talking with us all about how the clean team operates on a daily basis, what, you know, what all they're responsible for, um, as well as some of the upcoming spring activations that will be going on. So in a moment, I'll be passing things over to Karen. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat box and we can queue them up there. Um, and once Karen's kind of finished with the prepared portion of things, we can get to those questions. Uh, as well as give yourselves an opportunity to take yourself off mute and ask them, excuse me, ask them any questions that you'd like to. Um, I'll also note we are recording this session and we always put these on our YouTube channel and make them available online. So if you'd like to share or reference any of this content, you can do so uh, after this meeting concludes as well. So with all of that, I'll pass things over now to Karen. Karen, thank you for joining us here today. Um, I know this is a, a you know, thing we, we really appreciate here, just a, a big part of what we do here at Downtown Spokane when we talk about keeping downtown clean, safe, and vibrant. That clean is such a big part, so we, we appreciate um, everything you and your team do and are looking forward to hearing about, um, about exactly what it is you guys do for us here. So if you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Great. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to everyone about the clean team. Um, as in our name, clean team, our, our basic function is cleaning, and we do that um, in many different ways. Uh, we have a approximately an 86 block area that we're responsible for cleaning on a daily basis right now, Monday through Friday. Um, the team works from 8 to 4.30 most days. Uh, we go out and do what we call our routes. We have the downtown area divided into two different routes. We start out first thing in the mornings with brooms and dust pans, and we head out, clean sidewalks, gutters, and parking spaces. Um, the area that we clean is approximately from Walnut on the west to Brown on the east. And they go from the railroad viaducts on the south down to uh, Spokane Falls Boulevard. We also have an area on the north side that we clean that encompasses the flour mill, uh, David's Pizza, Monroe Street Hill, and the Broadway area. Uh, so the team goes out and their daily um, chores are to get out there and get the cigarette butts and the trash and everything off the sidewalks and, as I said, curb lines and parking spaces. While they're out there doing their clean, they're also looking for graffiti. Uh, we get a lot of graffiti downtown on um, light poles, electrical boxes, um, business windows, things like that. So they're removing that graffiti as they're working through their routes. Um, we're also um, looking for things like uh, damage to lightings in the trees or um, things that have, you know, fallen off of buildings. We get a lot of that during um, the riots, but not so much anymore. Um, and they report that back to me or they have um, numbers that they can call them and they can report to a crime check or, you know, SPD or any of those areas. Uh, once we get our routes done, um, that's usually about lunchtime when we take a 30 minute break and then we head out after lunch for starting many of our special projects that we do. And the special projects include things like painting graffiti, um, any business in, or resident here in the downtown area in the bid. If you have any graffiti on your property, please give us a call and we're happy to come out and take care of that for you. We have um, a lot of probably six or seven different um, basic paint colors, gray, red, black, white, cream. Um, and we can use those colors to paint your graffiti or if you have your own paint, we're happy to use your paint and take care of the graffiti um, on your buildings. If you have a brick building, obviously we don't wanna paint that. So we have pressure washers that we use and depending on the quality of the brick and the mortar in your building, we can use our pressure washer to get those tags off. Uh, we can also do pressure washing on sidewalks in front of your business. So if anything like that comes up, please give us a call and we'll take care of it. Some of the other projects that we do, and it's uh, depending on the season, is we um, go out and we clean out the tree wells here in the downtown area where all um, the grates are. We also um, 
sanitize and wipe down the big belly garbage can, something um, that solid waste isn't able to do at this time, and we're happy to help out and take care of that. We also monitor things like that for damage or repairs that need to be taken care of, and we report back to the city um, with a report on a monthly basis as to what needs to be taken care of in, in downtown. Some of the other projects that we do is uh, we go into the uh, railroad viaducts, uh, we clean them every day, and at least once a week we go in and paint all the graffiti on the railroad viaducts. Um, there's approximately, no, not approximately, there are 14 railroad viaducts that we're responsible for, and those go from Division all the way out to Walnut. Um, another project that we take care of would be um, in the fall, we take care of all the leaves that fall on any of the street trees. We either bag them or we um, spray them out into the street and then the city comes by and picks them up. Another project that we do is um, during the winter, we are responsible for keeping the uh, wheelchair ramps uh, free of ice and snow. So we're either out there shoveling um, with our little snow shovels and then using a granular de-icer to take care of that problem and keep it um, accessible for all, all pedestrians. Or we have um, our gator, which is a little ATV that we use that has a snow blade on it. And we go out there and where we can, we um, plow the, the wheelchair ramps and we plow um, the entrances on the crosswalk so that there's access for everyone to get across the street safely. And this past year, we just started using a liquid de-icer. So we're going to be um, de-icing the crosswalks so that when you're out there in, a, in the middle of a snowstorm, uh, you have good footing and you can get across the street. Um, one of the many projects that we also do is uh, in the springtime, we plant downtown. And that's the project that we're um, working on right now. So we have um, 170 planters here throughout the downtown area and we're responsible for um, planting them and maintaining them throughout the year. So our planting will be taking place this year. Um, we have three planting dates. We have May 12th next week. We'll be going to be planting um, the north side up on the Monroe Street Hill and around David's Pizza and the Flour Mill. And then on the 18th, we're going to be out west by the Spokane Club out on First and Sprague. And then on 19 will be our big plant and we're planting the downtown core area. So that would um, be Main Street and First Street and Riverside and Sprague. Um, but these events, we like to encourage um, residents and businesses here in the downtown area to come out and volunteer, have a good time, get your hands in, in the potting soil and you know create some beautiful planters. Uh, we supply, obviously, all the plants, the, the equipment that you need, gloves, um, planting tools, etc. cetera. And uh, it's a, a nice event to uh, experience with your coworkers. A lot of them come for their lunchtime break. And if that's something that you're interested in doing, we're always looking for volunteers. I still have a couple of spaces available for this year, otherwise next year. Um, if you wanted to contact me or um, our marketing director, Liz, she could um, put you on the volunteer list and we could give you a call next year when that's going to be taking place. Another project that we do in coordination with Liz, the marketing director, is we do Spring Clean Week. And Spring Clean Week um, happens um, in coordination with Earth Day in uh, the third week in April. And we get out there and give downtown Spokane a good cleaning. We do everything from cleaning alleys to um, cleaning parking lots. Parking lots is not a responsibility of the clean team. So a lot of times they need a lot of love. And, and that's what we do on Spring Clean Week is we get into those areas that don't normally get cleaned by the clean team and get things uh, spiffed up. So if you're interested in volunteering for that event next year, then um, please give one of us a call or send us an email and we'll put you on the list for that. Um, the other kind of things that the clean team do is, um, most people don't realize is we are eyes out on the street. And what I mean by that is um, we're out monitoring, um, not traffic, but um, sidewalk situations, if you might want to call it that. Um, if there's anything suspicious going on, um, we can call crime check or we have our own security ambassadors that we can call 
or if you know in an emergency we can call 911 and get um, people the help that they need. So we work in coordination with our own security ambassadors. We do not intervene on any situations. We're just eyes on the street and out there helping um, where we can. Some of the other um, projects that we work on are events. We help out um, at Christmas time, setting up all the windows down there at the Grand and uh, any of the other um, decorations or, or things that have to be set up around downtown for the holidays, we take part in that. Um, we also help out with um, Food Truck Friday and get um, Wall Street set up for the food trucks that come in. And then um, once life gets back to normal downtown, which I really hope will be soon, we help out with events like um, Fall Fest and things like that that go on downtown. Um, one of the big events for us obviously, is Bloom's Day. We work on Bloom's Day Sunday, and we clean up downtown after Bloom's Day Sunday. And we try and make it as enjoyable an event for us as it is for everyone that's running Bloom's Day. So we get out there, um, and we're the last racers, you might say, you know, in the pack. We follow um, the racers as, as they come down um, Riverside, and we have usually have the motorcycle patrol behind us and we just go through and we clean up everything, water bottles and garbage and trash and, you know, anything that's left behind. Um, we do not clean up the uh, clothing articles that get thrown in the trees. We have a, um, a contract with a Geiger work crew. They come out and they follow behind us and they collect all of those clothings and articles and they get donated. So, um, that's kind of a, a big fun event for all of us. Not only we can't run Bloomsday, but we walk Bloomsday with garbage bags. So that's a, a real enjoyable thing that we get to do. Rain or shine, we're out there. Um, some of the other things that we do is we um, coordinate here in our office with um, our different staff on, on meetings and events and um, we get together and, and brainstorm things like we're going to be having a meeting next week and, and with our president and going to be brainstorming some ideas on keeping the viaducts cleaner and safer for the pedestrians that uh, need to get through from one part of town to the other part of town. So the clean team isn't just out there cleaning. We kind of have our fingers and toes and a lot of different things that are going on here in downtown and, and you know, keeping the area clean and safe and beautiful for those that come downtown to visit, work downtown and live downtown. That's great, Karen. Uh, and, you know, I'm wondering if you might also touch on, because I know there's so much uh, the clean team does, but could you also kind of touch on what, what the clean team doesn't do or what some of the, the common calls you might get that don't necessarily kind of fall under the umbrella of the services the clean team provides? Certainly. So um, we work on public spaces. And what that means is, you know, the sidewalk is a public space. Everyone um, gets to use the sidewalk. We do not work on private spaces. In other words, if you have a parking lot that someone owns, um, that's considered a private space that's not owned by the city. It's not, you know, available to anyone, you know, to, to use at their own will. Um, so we don't do parking lots. Um, we don't do alleys. We have a contract with the city and we, um, in our contract, we observe the, what the city requires us to do, which is they state the first 10 to 15 feet of alleys on both sides we are required to clean. But we kind of go above and beyond that. We go in at least 25 feet and clean the alleys because we think that's a, you know, a, a better goal to try and keep as, as much of the trash up and out um, that we can. Um, if you have something uh, in a courtyard or something like that, that, you know, it has got trash in it, um, that's the responsibility of um, the business owner or the property owner. That is not something that the clean team does. Um, we do not go out of the bid to do any of our work. We remain here in the bid. Um, that's, you know, part of our contract with the city. Um, we do not do things like climb trees. We do not climb ladders to get to graffiti that is, you know, way up on a wall or on a second floor um, fire escape or anything like that. Um, 
we follow all OSHA guidelines, you know, for, for our employees and, and safety is a real big issue with us. We make sure that all our employees are, you know, following rules and regulations for you know, use of equipment and things like that. Um, at right now, we are not working weekends um, due to the coronavirus. Um, our staff has been cut back, but we are, of course, um, always looking forward to that time where we can start working weekends again. Um, some of the other things that we um, don't do is we don't go into businesses to do anything. I mean, you know, if you have something on your loading dock or something, then, you know, we do not go in and, and clean um, on your loading dock. It has to be something that is accessible um, from a public area, in other words. Um, we will take care of graffiti um, anywhere we find graffiti, whether that's on um, private property or public property, but we do not go into courtyards and areas where we have to go through a building to get to that graffiti. That's the responsibility of the business owner or the property owner also. Excellent, thanks. And then Karen, um, would you also mind, just so people kind of know, um, talking a little bit about the equipment, the equipment and kind of vehicles that the clean team has at your disposal and, and how you use those and what those are good for? Sure. Um, right now we have two full-size Chevy Silverado pickup trucks um, and one uh, Gator ATV that we use. Um, the pickup trucks are shared with the uh, security ambassadors. They use one of the pickup trucks in the mornings to do their um, patrols around downtown first thing early in the morning. Um, we use uh, one of the other trucks as our water truck this time of year. We have a 250 gallon um, water tank that we keep in our water truck and we have it completely outfitted to uh, water all the plants, all of our planters downtown. We also use that same truck to um, operate our pressure washer. We have a portable pressure washer and then a um, pressure washer on wheels that we use that's a little bit um, higher pressure when we go out and um, clean graffiti or you know clean up a mess on a sidewalk. Uh, we also have a uh, 80 gallon tank in our gator that we use um, Weekly, we go into the viaducts, um, brown viaduct on Wednesday, and we spray that viaduct out with a hospital grade um, disinfectant and cleaner. And we are able to do that as so we have a uh, retractable boom on the back of the gator so we can open that up and, and spray out um, the sidewalks in that railroad viaduct and other viaducts you know, as they become available. We can also use the same thing to go in and clean sidewalk areas. We also have a hose that is connected to that, to that tank where we can go in and if there's a nasty, as we call it, something you know on the sidewalk that needs to be cleaned up. We have the ability to have water right there and get that, um, that mess cleaned up. Uh, we also have a wonderful piece of equipment that we've had for two years now. Um, we call it the Beast. It's a, um, a sidewalk cleaner and um, didn't come out this year because of COVID and we're hoping still this year to get it back out. And basically what that does, it's high pressure water, like a pressure washer, but it's like, looks like a giant rug cleaner and you just push it down the sidewalk and the high pressure water um, cleans all the dirt and the scum and the nasties off of the sidewalk and it goes back into the trailer and it's a, uh, a recycling unit. So what happens with the water, the gray water goes in, it goes through several um, micron filters and comes back out and we're able to reuse that water again um, to clean the sidewalks and continue on. And that's uh, usually the, the beast comes out around April is depending on the weather. We have to make sure that, you know, we're done with our frost because uh, if we leave any, any water in any of the filters, um, it will freeze. So it comes out in about April or May and works until October. And we have a special team for that. And they just operate uh, the gate, I mean, excuse me, the beast on a um, five day basis, five days a week. They usually start around um, 6.30 in the morning to get to those sidewalks where there's a lot of pedestrian traffic. So we get those clean before people come out on the sidewalks and uh, makes a big difference. Um, downtown looks fantastic when we're able to get out there with uh, the beast and get things cleaned up. 
Um, some of our other tools, we have all kinds of gardening tools that we use. We can do, you know, pruning and digging and um, cutting and all kinds of things like that out there, um, whatever necessary in our planters. So, so that the city has, doesn't have to come and take care of that. We don't prune trees. We're not allowed to do that because we're not certified arborists. But you know, the, the little stuff is we, what we can take care of when we're out there on our, our daily routes, and keeping the sidewalk safe for you know, people here in the downtown area. Great, and uh, so we're starting to come up towards the end of the half hour segment. So if anyone uh, would like to enter any questions into Karen, please feel free to do that at any point. Um, but while, uh, while we're on it, because I know Karen, you mentioned the, uh, the, the water tank and that kind of made me think of, and also talking about spring clean week, um, the story back in November of cleaning the Lincoln statue. Would you mind kind of, um, as an example of sort of ways that the community can kind of collaborate with the clean team talking about that or how, um, you know, spring, spring clean week is sort of our big official week for people in the community to come out and volunteer and help in the beautification and cleaning of downtown, but that's not necessarily the only time that they um, can do that. Is that right? Or can you expand that's on that correct. a little bit? That's correct. Yeah, we welcome volunteers um, year round. There's always something going on here in downtown when we're in our normal phase. There's events always going on, on during the weekends. Um, we encourage any, you know, volunteers that want to come down and help out with events to, to contact us. Um, as far as the Lincoln statue um, is concerned, um, someone decided to throw red paint all over it. And we had a company um, come up and, and volunteer their time and their resources and for three days and they took care of that um, uh, situation and, and Lincoln looks very nice right now. That was Service Master that came out and took care of that for us. Um, as far as um, other avenues that I, for vol volunteers or businesses or residences downtown, um, just let us know or check the website. There's always things listed on the website as far as you know what we're looking for or what you can do. Um, there's you know lots of cleaning and planting and and you know partying and things like that that people can partake in. But um, as Kevin said, Spring Clean Week is the big one. That's the coming out of winter and getting ready for summer. It used to be called Spiff the Block, and now it is called Spring Clean Week. And I mean, there's all kinds of opportunities there where you can volunteer to do um, cleaning and painting and um, graffiti removal. And uh, this year we did, did something new. We planted, uh, created um, hanging baskets that are gonna go up on Wall Street. So there's always something going on here in downtown if you would like to participate. Excellent. Yeah, so that is a reminder to anyone uh, who is interested in that sort of thing. Please feel free to go to downtownspokane.org. We have a contact form there. Um, just let us know what you're interested in doing or if you have any ideas, and we're happy to collaborate with you any time of the year. Um, before we kind of start to wrap up, Karen, um, I know we are doing some hiring. Would you like to talk about some of the positions open and what they are yeah. and who we're kind of looking for? Yes. So um, currently we have a um, several positions open. We have uh, positions open on the clean team itself. Um, those would be the people that are out there on the routes doing the actual cleaning. We have positions open for a seasonal water and that position would be working um, 20 hours a week, Monday through Friday during the summer. Uh, that would be a great job for, you know, if you have a high school student that's 16 or older, um, we're able to employ them and they could um, come and, and get some some work experience um, here in the downtown. They'll be completely supervised. We are also looking for more security ambassadors. Um, those are the guys and gals in the blue and gray out there on the streets. Um, there's a job description on our website also uh, for that position. And a new position that has come up is going to be the um, the clean and safe director. That would be the director of both the clean and safe team. Um, part of that is my position. I'm going to be retiring here at the end of the month. So um, that's something that they're looking for is, is a director that could um, monitor both the security ambassadors and the clean team. And the job description and application are on our website and please feel free to uh, pursue or peruse any of those um, um, applications or resumes that you might like to turn in. 
Great. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I will just note on that note that, uh, Karen, you know, as you mentioned, you are retiring and I uh, just want to give a huge thank you to you. I, I've been here, uh, not very long in the grand scheme of things with the downtown Spokane partnership, but it's very evident how much of an impact you've had on this entire organization and downtown. So thank you so much for everything you've done and, Absolutely. and the way you've led this team over that whole time. Cause I know it's, um, going to carry on into the future, even after you're no longer officially part of the team. So um, thank you for all that. And thank you for the, the all you do with your team. You know, it's a lot of ground to cover. It's, it's not an easy job, but we appreciate it. And uh, you do a great job. And we know um, that a lot of downtown is, is equally, you know, recognizes how much you do too. So thank you for all that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So we're just about out of time here. So um, we'll just say, uh, is there anything else like you'd like to add, Karen, before we kind of sign out? Um, I just want to say that um, I think the clean team is um, a great experience for someone that maybe is just starting out in the workforce and that doesn't have a lot of skills and is not sure of what direction that they want to take in life. Um, we're very much a team here. Um, that's also part of our name, but we, um, we work together. We, we work together on the streets. We work together, you know, um, promoting downtown Spokane. Um, we work together um, to come up and, and do the best that we can do, you know, for downtown and the bid and for the DSP. So um, if you're interested or know someone that's interested, you know, please think of us and uh, pass the word. Excellent. Well, yes, you, you do it and you do it well. So thanks again for that. So uh, I also just want to thank everyone who's watching now or watching uh, later on YouTube. So thank you very much for coming out. We appreciate you taking the time. Karen, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to speak with us. So thanks for that. Um, if anyone is interested in future 30 minutes with sessions, we do have our events page, which will be listing all of our upcoming speakers. So keep an eye out for that, as well as our weekly uh, e-newsletter. So if you're not signed up for that, please also go to downtownspokane.org and there will be a link on the page to sign up for that newsletter or just contact our team about volunteer opportunities with the clean team or in general. So uh, with that, thank you, everybody. Have a great Thursday, and we will see you around. Thanks a lot. Thank you.